Let's come before the Lord together and pray as a church family. Will you join me, please? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful Sunday as we come together to worship you as the body of Christ. Thank you that we have the freedom to gather openly in your name, that we do not have to fear for our lives when we praise you aloud, and thank you for all the blessings you have showered upon us. Lord, sometimes I'm afraid that we take our freedoms for granted in this country, that we assume everything will go our way and that we can do as we please wherever we are. Father, help us to see that your way is the only true and right way to view our world and our freedoms. Help us to humble ourselves and acknowledge that you are sovereign and that you know what is best for us. Help us to seek your wisdom daily. We can only see a small part of your big picture. Let us be content in knowing that in all things we are in your hands. Lord, as we experience difficulties in our health, relationships, and livelihoods, give us companions to walk beside us, as they are so often your direct help and blessing, showing us that you care for your people. We can hear your words of comfort and encouragement in those conversations and time spent together. You never forsake us, even when we cannot tell how things will work out. You are the Lord of the universe. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, La Crescenta Presbyterian Church. What a joy it is to be back with all of you and uh, see some of longtime friends now, people that uh, I've been able to serve in different capacities. And I have to agree, yes, Pat Chambers is a great blessing. Uh, now, Commissioner to the Presbytery um, and, and serving on your behalf to uh, this larger body of, of Christian churches uh, in this region from uh, Silver Lake uh, to um, Lancaster and from La Cañada to Westlake Village, 24 churches and about 40 new worshiping communities that are coming together in places like parks and homes in different places with the same purpose uh, that we have here this morning, which is worshiping God and getting to know Jesus and following Jesus. My name is Juan Sarmiento. Some people call me El Jefe, but you don't have to. Um, and, and my role in the Presbytery is uh, to try to bring us all together in, in this wonderful uh, adventure of faith that is being disciples of Jesus Christ within the Reform, the Presbyterian tradition. Last Sunday, I had the privilege of worshiping a St. Giles Cathedral, St. Giles Church in the city of Edinburgh. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that right, but, um, um, and, and what a joy it is uh, to gather uh, with God's people in different places. Um, in, in, in last week in, in Scotland, this week to be able to be here at La Crescenta, but with the same heart of worshiping our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, the reading of, of God's Word to us uh, is part of, uh, of, of a series of messages that Pastor Morris has been preaching about uh, a big gospel in small places. Regardless of where we are, something I love about La Crescenta Church and about Pastor Morris 
is the ability to focus on the greatness of God and the gospel that we preach. So let us listen, listen to God's word to us uh, in the 24th chapter of the book of Joshua, uh, verses 14 um, and through 15. Listen to God's word. Now, fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Can you repeat that last phrase with me? But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And for the reading of the gospel. I will invite you to stand and rise as you're able in heart or, uh, or body. And listen to God's word to us through the gospel of Matthew. <clears throat> listen to God's word. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you <clears throat> that you come to us where we are. Thank you that you've shown us through this time of praises and prayers that you are with us as you promise, and as your call came clearly to the lives of those uh, fishermen in, on, in that lake, let your word come to us in the power of your Holy Spirit, so that we may respond accordingly and serve as your disciples. In the trustworthy name of Jesus, we pray, and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. One of the interesting things that I noticed in, uh, during my uh, recent time in Scotland is that not only are they celebrating or looking forward to the Summer Olympics that will happen for the third time in the city of Paris, uh, but that they are, the people of God are celebrating the witness of someone that you might have heard about. It, it was an Olympic um, contestant, an athletic uh, man <clears throat> that uh, was uh, expected to perform in a notable way, the 100 meters uh, race in that uh, uh, Olympics 100 years ago. And then when the time came for his race, he happened to fall on a Sunday. Now, I know that for us, um, th those of you that are familiar with the story of Eric Little would have, if you were like me, when uh, the movie came out uh, and around 45 years ago, I saw it later because I was too young to understand the movie, but um, that... Why did he do something like that? And, 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 and Christians in, um, in, in Paris celebrate to this day that instead of running that race, he chose to go and preach at the Scots Church in Paris. I'll be honest, and I think I could do that with you. It sounds like a little bit extreme, right? to lose the medal 
that was almost guaranteed to you in order to make a statement of what was important for him in his life. Some of us might see it as a stubborn uh, expression of religious fanaticism. Some of us might see it as an unnecessary uh, 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 way of uh, proving one's point. But the fact is that Eric Little uh, not only stood there, but if you watch the movie, and some of you might remember the musical background that, uh, of, of him running at the slow motion uh, in a very particular way, but he ended up running for the 400 meters race and breaking a record and winning gold. Now, that is so notable that makes it to the Hollywood movies, right? And earned a producer and the director's four Academy Awards. But whether it is in Edinburgh or, Scot uh, or in Paris or it is in La Crescetta or in the Sea of Galilee, we are people that have a call, and some of us have the um, ability to hear that call exactly in, where, in, the, uh, in the person, the kind of people that we are. I don't think we have a lot of fishermen among us, but we do have people in different capacities. I know that we do have some uh, qualified people here at La Crescenta, for which we at the Presbytery are grateful. And that um, that um, uh, expresses itself in different areas of our lives. Whether we consider ourselves to be overachievers or just uh, a family member, that is part of God's call in our lives. That is how God has gifted us. But something essentially more significant happens here, which is an encounter with a rabbi that happened about 15 miles away from the place where Jesus was born. Jesus, without a doubt, was familiar with that lake. Um, him growing up in Galilee of the Gentiles. And he comes to the encounter of this gentleman and calls them to follow him. Now, the, word, this, uh, the, the words uh, that we use for discipleship uh, are not as common in this day and age. We've used the words um, for teaching, for mentoring, <coughs> and others. But there is a, a, a passage uh, from um, the scriptures that uh, that uh, Jewish people used to read, not necessarily canonical, not in the Old Testament, but uh, a sage, a wise man uh, of the second century before Christ by the name of Joseph ben Joser, wrote something that has called the attention of people that like Pastor Maurice and myself that are very intently um, uh, committed to discipleship um, it becomes very significant. What he wrote was, let thy house be a meeting house for the wise, and powder thyself in the dust of their feet, and drink their words with thirstiness. These words about powdering, powdering ourselves in the dust of the wise are a little bit of strange and have puzzled people People, scholars know that it has to do with encouraging itinerant preachers and teachers that will come hope to, to come and, and, and be with, uh, with people at their homes, to make our homes places of study of scriptures, um, to learn from them. Teachers back then, uh, or sages, uh, the word in Hebrew was hakam, or the wise. And then immediately after that, the word rabbi is adopted, and that is, becomes a uh, title for our Lord Jesus, teacher, master. I believe that you are here, and you, uh, we are here, because we know 
that regardless of how much information and knowledge there seems to be in society, there is more to learn. And it is not just more information. It has to do with wisdom, with how we live, with how we relate to others, and with our sense of direction and purpose in life. And I want to say, if you're here and you uh, probably don't feel that way, you're, you, you're here for other reasons, let me tell you, you're also welcome here. But let me tell you, knowing this church, you will find opportunities to be invited to something beyond the routine of your life, to following Jesus. And I sure hope that you open your life to that invitation. In the New Testament, the followers of Jesus were called disciples, which means apprentices in the daily life. A disciple then is simply someone who has decided to be with another person, to become what that person is, and to become capable of doing what that person does. And someone like Jesus would certainly be appealing for a fisherman that heard him say, come follow me, and I will make you fisherman of people. Now, what is it that Jesus disciples us into? It is the reign of God, the kingdom of God, this new uh, reality that has uh, more preeminence and importance even than any of the nations of the earth. As someone that has been kindly welcome into the United States, I celebrate with you the independence of this great nation. And as followers of Jesus, we affirm that there is a kingdom that has no end, a reality that, has, that is more uh, significant, deeper than any country that has ever existed and will ever exist, and has Jesus as the king. And because of that, Jesus, no less than 21 times, in scriptures, in 12 different interactions, similar to the ones that, we, that we've just read in Matthew 4, calls others boldly, yes, to follow him. To seed at his feet. In some ways, yes, the word of the old sage, the Jewish sage, could become part of us as we are bathed in the dust of the rabbi, of this wise man, like no other. And in today's day and age, when we are being discipled and influenced by different voices that sometimes are contradictory, confusing, and instead of bringing us together and being in clarity to our lives, bring confusion, separation, and hostility among us, it is more important than ever that instead of being discipled by political pundits and people that interpret things in different ways according to the limited knowledge that they have, that we might learn to sit at the feet of Jesus and bathe ourselves with the dust. Because he has walked the walk more than talked the talk. And because he's the only one that we can affirm as the one reliable Lord and Savior of our lives. The theme of discipleship reminds us that the Christian life is far from being something stagnant. It's much different than being subject to marketing uh, techniques and messages. It's very different than thinking I go to church on Sunday, although I'm sure glad to be here this morning and that you are here. It is more than just assenting with the teachings of the church, although of course, all that is essential for a Christian. But living as a disciple involves, some, involves so much more. Discipleship is something inter, in, intensely personal and dynamic. It entails ongoing transformation, conversion, 
and continually learning to say the next yes to Jesus and even no to other voices. The true disciple of Jesus is never just going through the motions. They never settle for just mediocrity and routine or for the bare minimum or for a check-in-the-box approach to faith and religiosity. Rather, true disciples are striving for the true greatness according to Jesus. Always on the lookout for the next step of faith that the Holy Spirit is calling us to. And Joshua was one that had walked with Moses for about 40 years, not only sitting and listening, but also asking questions, wrestling with Moses, following him for all that long. And then when the time comes to call others to a commitment, he says, then you choose today whom you will serve, either the Lord or the gods that you've known in other places or the gods that you're getting acquainted to in these new lands. Discipleship is deeply personal. It comes where you are. Note that the Gentiles land where this Lake of Galilee took place was a place where there was a majority of people from other places. Scholars say that in that land, the, the majority of people spoke different languages and were from different religions. But in that place, and that is, and what we see is the names of Simon and Andrew as an expression of the fact that they were not Jewish by descent. And Jesus grew among them and was able to speak to them. And my prayer is that in our lives and through our lives, Jesus might speak to others in a very personal way. Discipleship more than a moment of decision, and yes, he might include a decision in my life he has. It is an ongoing process. A preacher called Frank Craddock used to say, to give my life to Christ appears glorious, pouring ourselves for others, paying the ultimate price of martyrdom, saying to God, yes, I am ready to go in an ultimate blaze of glory. But he said, following Jesus is more like someone that rather than cashing a thousand dollars and putting putting them putting a thousand dollars on the table, is someone that goes to the bank and, and changes a thousand dollars in quarters. How many quarters would that be? And that in every situation discerns how to use a quarter and 50 cents. I believe that when we're called to serve in our community, serve as a greeter, when we, we're called to serve as part of, of the church, we are saying yes to God and to the life of discipleship. When somebody calls us and tells us, I have a situation that I don't know how to, to, to talk to, would you pray with me and we could pray for them? That is the, the discipleship, the call to discipleship. My friends, today we are gathered here. And as the um, ancient sage would say, this is not only a meeting house for the wise, but a way in which we learn to powder ourselves in the dust of the feet of the master. Because not only we see, but we go where he shows us. It was right in Galilee that Jesus came and called his disciples to make disciples of all nations. He took them back to that place, to a mountain in Galilee, and he said, you will be my disciples and you will be, you will make disciples of others. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for your call that resonates to us regardless of where we find ourselves. 
Thank you for the privilege of seating at your table, for the privilege of knowing that you are the one that calms our thirst and much more beyond that we could ever do. Prepare our hearts for surrendering who we are, what we have to you this morning. And thank you that in the journey, you provide restoration, renewal, grace, forgiveness for us to carry on. And in that journey, continue to be bathed in your dust. Bless us, O God, as we partake with you in this holy moment of communion. In Christ's name. As we prepare to go out of this place, remember that right where you are, God has a call for you. What you are doing matters to God, and He wants to use it and redeem it for God's own kingdom. But remember that there is a higher calling that in everything you do, Jesus has called us to be his disciples. You know, Eric Little went on to serve in China as a missionary, to be ordained as a pastor three, uh, seven years later, and then died at an internment camp. I'm sure that is not what God wants for you, but God has something wonderful for you to manifest his grace and his love in this world. So let us go out of this place, encouraged that God has called us. Jesus has come to the seashore, and God will sustain us in the road ahead. Go, therefore, with joy to love and serve the Lord in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people say, amen.